So Welcome Home is just like intrinsically gay, right? I mean, look at all of them. Look at the look at them. Hey, you haven't returned. You are gay. Y'all, on God, I saw Howdy Pillar at Pride last Aww. year. All jokes aside, happy Pride Month, people. This is a month of acceptance and love, celebrating whoever you are for whatever you are and what makes you amazing. I hope you've treated yourself this month. Baked yourself a little dessert, bought yourself that shirt you wanted, crashed a car, go crazy. Welcome home. That's what this video is about. Yeah, it's gay. Everything about it is gay, from the creator to the fans to the characters, all bases were covered here. And by gay, I mean queer, anyone that's not cisgender, straight, or allosexual. But as I said earlier, everything in Welcome Home is gay, and I meant it. Clown himself, the creator of Welcome Home, is openly queer and has went out of his way to make sure that people in the LGBT community are properly represented in his works. I also mentioned that the characters being gay, and boy howdy are they. <laughs> howdy. Every single one, well, some of them are more so headcanons, but we have at least four canonically queer characters, okay? Okay. Let's introduce them all now. Starting off with Frank Frankly, the not so straight straight man. He is non-binary and gay. We know this because he's got himself a little husband, the local mailman, Eddie Deer. We know he's non-binary because he's seen rep representing, sorry, represent um, his NB pride with a sweater vest and bow tie. He's pretty cut and dry with who he is. I'm sure he prefers it that way. Frank is Frank, his partner is Eddie, and that's that. Next up is Eddie Deer. A simple mailman, he is bisexual. And it's not specifically said that he's bisexual, however, he is in a relationship with Frank Frankly, and it's pretty safe to assume that Eddie is not only attracted to non-binary people, since non-binary is literally non-gendered, so by virtue, you're liking more than one gender. If you're attracted to an envy person, since they by definition do not have one, yeah, you get it. If you want to call him pansexual too, that works, since pansexuality falls under the umbrella of bisexuality, just like omnisexuality. And I saw this mentioned a few places, but apparently Cloud mentioned in a stream that Eddie does drag? Okay, huge fucking win. Imagine his drag name is like Parcel with a fancy E and everything. But yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, I just thought it'd be fun to share. The next character to be part of this beautiful pride parade is Julie Joyful, who's rocking an adorable gender fluid apron. Now, weirdly enough, I've seen a few people be like, but she's a girl. She looks like a girl. Um, suck my nose? The way you present yourself and your gender are not correlated. If Julie wants to present herself femininely, she can. That doesn't change the fact that she's gender fluid. Maybe she is a girl some days and wants to wear a dress. Maybe she isn't a girl some days and wants to wear a dress. It doesn't matter. Maybe we haven't seen her express other parts of her yet. We don't know anything. But yeah, I love gender fluid Julie. I also looked it up and apparently she's canonically bisexual. I couldn't find a source at all for this on the wiki it was on, so I'm assuming somebody's headcanon made it to the wiki. And... I like it. I don't know, I just feel like Julie has an open mind and an open heart. However, I could also see her as lesbian. Just saying, <laughs> please, Julie Wally Shippers, put down the guns, I didn't mean it. Completely, literally color picked the lesbian flag from her design. But yeah, Julie is a complex and busy character, and I just like her a lot. <laughs> Unfortunately, our last canonical character before we get into some headcanon y territory is Poppy. Poppy, the local baking bird woman, is trans. Now, let's tackle the elephant in the room the felt glitter glue colored elephant. How can a puppet be trans? It's a puppet. Now, Cloud actually made a post on this saying the following. Oh, I love thinking about this because there's a lot of interesting things to say about this in regards to puppets. I won't talk too much. I have so much to say, but I have to whittle it down. I think about this with everyone in Welcome Home. Frank, Wally, and so on. Poppy, too. Additionally, that I cannot go too deeply into it because I may give something away. I used to talk with friends, speculative and for fun, that some Muppets would have an exploration through the idea of gender, like Janice from the Muppets, changing in design so that she presented femininely and was regarded as a little lady Muppet. Then you and I would go into a deeper conversation about what defines a puppet's gender identity or the transition into a different one, which I would love to write about, but I feel like I am already getting too wordy. 
I will say that I think to summarize, that is the biases and culture which your cast of characters dwells in that defines the way they regard themselves and the changes they go through. Welcome Home is not isolated in that regard. Thank you for asking. So, if you're like me, and that's to say, you're not the googliest eye. Hey, so I just realized in my script it says what the fuck is googly and like, what is googly? Okay, sorry. Anyway. If you don't get it, I'm pretty sure what they're saying is that puppets are created a certain way, and therefore, sentient puppets most likely associate themselves with that gender at first. But as they experience more in life, they think more about their identities and what labels, or lack thereof, may feel more right for them, and how they think and feel about themselves and who they are. Not a whole lot different from humans, I guess. But this begs an interesting question about Poppy. The show seems to acknowledge her as female, yes? But so does Clown, and I know Clown would respect Poppy's pronouns. So does that mean that Poppy was somehow created as male or something other than female, and communicated that it wasn't right to the creators? This is going in my Welcome Home Theory fodder folder. We also know that Poppy isn't female to male because guess what? She's also a lesbian! Hooray lesbians, let's go! She's wearing a little lesbian apron and it is adorable. We love you, Poppy. You're such a fucking icon. You belong at Paris Fashion Week. So, um, headcan of time. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'll make the section of the video quick. Make sure to comment your own headcanons below because I'm curious. So I almost feel odd saying this, but I feel like Howdy is demi-romantic asexual. Like, he'd only fall for someone truly after forming a deep bond with them, and even then, he'd be ace, but the kind of ace that, like, does it if their partner wants to. But also, I could see how he has literally anything, so. Sally is a fruit, I don't care what anyone says. She likes girls, do not try to convince me otherwise, or we shall get into a bit of a kerfuffle. Barnaby is... Huh, I don't know. I almost want to say he's straight, but he's a welcome home character, so he's not, like, automatically. I really can't see him dating anyone. He's just a big old funny guy, you know? Actually, I lied. I could totally see him, like, marrying someone who loves his jokes. Not Howdy. Not Howdy, though. That's not what I meant. Um, like, a little hot dog vendor wife. Whatever, he's bisexual. Let's move on. And of course, last but certainly not least, Barnaby's best friend, the little gumdrop himself, Wally! People are so attached to him, I'm scared to say my opinion. Um, I feel like Wally doesn't really care about things like gender or appearances. None of that is relevant, he just likes someone for who they are. A joke, I feel like I was being watched when I wrote this script. I'm like, so scared. But yeah, if I about if he's ace or not, I'm not about to like, go into the specifics of how puppet sexual attraction works. Unless it's about Dr. Teeth. Whoa. Just kidding, he scares me! Have you seen how long his arms are? But yeah, speaking of sexual stuff, I guess. Sorry, weird transition, I know. While I have you all here, I want to talk about Clown's recent policy change about not safe for work art and tagging. The tag has a specific name, and I won't say its name in fear of minors finding it, but there seems to be a lot of backlash against it, so much in fact that people were insisting Clown was hacked? However, he wasn't, everything is fine. Clown said he made this decision not coerced or forced, which makes sense. Even if we go back to his original boundaries about not safe for work, they said that they were unsure about it and didn't want it publicly posted due to minors and people who might be uncomfortable with not safe for work. Not that they were uncomfortable with the content itself. Now, a lot of people have been claiming that Clown was forced to do this and no. Like I said, he kind of made it clear he needed time to think about it and a ton of people are trying to almost protect and defend him, which is, don't do that. Infantilizing to clown is gross. The babying of autistic people is already insufferable and annoying, and seeing this whole mess has just reminded me of how awful it is. There are also the people calling those who make not safe for work content gross or perverts, which I feel like is wrong. Why are we shaming people for sexuality? Especially in a largely LGBT community, maybe I'm looking into it too much, but shaming others for expressing sexuality feels inherently wrong. Kind of reminds me of something? Oh wait, homophobic religious groups? What are you doing here? It's not bingo night! <laughs> At the end of the day, the tag was made for a reason. For minors and people who are uncomfortable with it to be able to block it and not see any of that stuff. 
So going into the tag and tweeting about how you don't want to see it is definitely not the answer. That literally defeats the purpose. This was a space made for adults who are seeking this specific content. If that is not you, do not interact with it. I completely understand not wanting to see that content and even being disgusted by it. However, it's not okay to act like you're better than someone based on a lack of sexuality. Just block the tag. Clown is allowed to make his own decisions. He's a grown man. Sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent there. What was I talking about? Oh yeah. Dr. Teeth and R. Will they, won't they? <laughs> uh, who knows I can't run? Look at his arms, dude. I'm so- look at them. Also, something I just thought about Welcome Home. The first year it started airing was 1969, which was the year the Stonewall riots occurred. Hell yeah. I'm like 74% sure Clown did this on purpose, but still, 69 is 69. And those Stonewall riots happened for a reason. The end of the 20th century was some of the most openly homophobic times in history, which is sort of highlighted compared to, say, 300 years ago, because now they had words for homosexual and transgender people, yet they were still hated and othered. So because Welcome Home was supposedly a kid's show, glancing at my Welcome Home theory fodder folder, these people groups would likely not be represented no matter what the characters or puppets themselves identify as. So we're most likely going to see this representation in a very low-key way, like Bert and Ernie, or right along with the horror aspect. I think either way is a very cool way to show off these characters and who they are, so I'm very excited to see how this will be presented to us. All in all, through Welcome Home, Clown has provided literally so much representation for queer folk in such a short amount of time, and that's just in the small amount of Welcome Home we've seen so far. We're only 5% in, and we have confirmed gay couples. Yes, there's another confirmed couple in Welcome Home. I can make a whole other video on that. Gay characters on different parts of the gender spectrum, characters completely off the gender spectrum, it's everything and it is amazing. And I guess what I really like about it is that it all feels so natural. None of it feels forced or just there for representation's sake. You know, it feels like these characters are queer because that's the way they were born. Made? Sewn? Created, I guess. Not because an artist wanted to do a bit of inclusion. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with artists making gay characters so they can have gay characters. But when it feels natural, it hits way harder. Welcome Home and its characters are just truly something so special, and I feel like that's been obvious since the creation of the site. Clown's imagination is really so wonderful, and their brain is made of rainbow-hued yarn and yet-to-be-ironed fuse beads. He's really someone to admire, and though gaining such a large following has been a bit stressful, I'm so glad his project is getting the attention it deserves, with all the love, effort, and care he put into it. But yeah, Welcome Home? It's for the gays and googly-eyed. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Sorry, I know this video is pretty much just well-known information, but I wanted to make a cute welcome home thing for Pride Month. I also talked about a few things just beyond the sexualities of the characters, and maybe not everyone knew this, so I feel justified in making this video. Um, thank you for watching. Remember to comment your own headcanons down below, too, because I'm really curious. Alright, I'm done for you this time. Bye now. Thank you for watching.